who explores how environments affect human health. After studying urban geography and visual art at UBC, he spent four years researching how neighborhoods where children live impact their development. He works at Golder Sustainable Communities, creating maps for diverse urban planning and landscape architecture projects. Please welcome Anthony Smith. All right, I'm a bit of a map nerd. I live maps, and for the last five years, or 10,000 hours, I've worked making maps about work, but also about my own life. As you can see here, I live in the built environment. I live in the heart of the city, and I believe that the cities we live in affects the health and well-being of the people who live in them. As a contrast to that healthy environment, you can see here the density of cycling accidents in the last five years or so, and you can see, again, the built environment directly influencing the unhealth in this case, or the accidents. And I believe that by visualizing the data, it gives us a powerful lens to explore the patterns in our society and understand the scale, the layers, and a subject matter with more clarity. So this is just an example of combining multiple da data layers uh, to understand the question, what influences cycling? And this is the only set of maps I did not make. These are by Megan Winters at UBC, now at SFU. But what I'd like to introduce you to today is the work of a mentor of mine named Dr. Clyde Hertzman, who recently passed away. I worked with him at UBC, understanding how the environments kids live in literally get under the skin through a process called epigenetics. And that model is basically saying that children are nested within a series of these scales. So I'd just like to walk you through a few of those scales to exemplify this. We start with the neighborhood, and within that, a house. You can see the small white box is my home. And that's the scale that I think most of you work with. That's the site and the context. But what I'd like to say is GIS is a powerful tool, and I would like to collaborate with you, and as I do in my own office, to explore the broader context and some of the, the, the dynamics that are at play in the city scale. And this is by uh, just showing this because it's a single map that I'm zooming back on to reveal more context. And the next map you'll see as we go to the regional scale Again, we see the broad picture, and at this scale, we can start to talk about the cultural factors at play, the immigration factors, the environmental systems that are interacting on that site, but also at all the scales in between. And the next map you'll see is the, the product of my undergrad thesis, which was on mapping the population patterns of British Columbia. This is something called a, the ecumene, basically where people live. And I combined a whole bunch of data to come up with this model that predicts the population and shows that 98% of the people live in less than 2% of the land area. So although we live in very specific places, we are still nested within broader environments like the political atmosphere of our province. And today, as an example of a focus or a topic, I'd like to zoom in on children. And children nested in cities, why? As you can see here on this cartogram, over half the children in our province live in that lower mainland area. So the distortion here represents the number of children. And particularly at UBC, I worked with Clyde and a team at the Human Early Learning Partnership who we are, our purpose was to collect data from kindergarten teachers on the state of child development for all kindergarten age students in BC every year. And the product of that is this data set called the Early Development Instrument it's, it's an educational thing, so I'm not expecting you to be experts, but red is bad. That's the takeaway here. Uh, the percentage of the children, up to 30% of the children in our province are vulnerable on these scales, the physical, social, emotional, cognitive, and linguistic scales. So for you, those are the scales. Maybe the physical is one you can latch onto and have a really big impact in your work. And you may be influencing the site, but collectively you'll change the city. And this is just another visual trick I like to use to dimension the number of children using an extrusion in Google Earth. So I'm not telling you a whole lot about the maps. Just I, I want you to just focus on the visuals. The, the idea here is we're telling stories with data. We're making these data into something that you can attach yourself to and say, hey, why are the poor parts of the city watching more TV? And the next map you'll see we explored some more dimensions in the data to understand the contextual factors that influence children's development and things like peer relationships, uh, after school activities, nutrition and sleep. 
you may not have a direct influence on those, but you can create spaces for children to interact with peers. You can create ac after school activity places. And the way I like to think of it, these assets is they're like the soil that we create our city and the children are the flowers that grow from the soil. I know it's cheesy, but forgive me. <laughs> this is my, my niece, uh, cousin and my partner and we, we spend a lot of time in our community gardens. So this is an example of a, a public space we spend a lot of time there, and for children, that's the healthiest place I could ever imagine. It's, it's the best part of the city. So I thought, at a broader scale, how do we analyze that? I looked at every neighborhood in Vancouver and quantified the percentage of the land that is vegetation or these other land uses. And then I did some regression analysis and controlling for SES and other factors, found a significant relationship between the percentage of the vegetation and an inverse relationship to the percentage of industrial area and the EDI child development data. So, another big picture topic I'd like to focus on just for a moment. Immigration is a huge factor and obviously is related to this kindergarten age success indicator. If children don't understand the language, there's a, a large barrier for them to interact with their teachers. But as landscape architects, I'm encouraging you to look at this from a lens that, hey, if I'm designing in, in South Maine, in that uh, South Asian area, we need to understand the context that we're working in and understand the the socio-cultural landscapes, not just the physical built environment landscapes. As well, uh, I know someone, or many of you may design uh, childcare facilities. We have a dramatic need for childcare in the city. I did a supply demand analysis of the number of care spaces and the total population under five. And the net map there shows this, this desert of childcare. So, in closing, I'd just like to say that while you look at the city through a very specific lens, like a photographic picture, there are many different scales and layers to analyze the data. And I encourage you to work with your GIS team. They don't just make base maps and that's it. We do a lot of other things and we can add a lot of value to your projects. Thank you very much.